I made that record in 2014 with them. Dude. 2014. Well, that's it, seven it, years ago. Well, it, I know what I'm trying to tell you now, it's it's that fresh. So, and that's the thing about for me, it's like it's Thanks, about looking man. at what I enjoy that because oh. It's about basically for me. It's about the rock and roll, you know, bringing that back, you know, and showing the strength of that music because I think that music's kind of dying away, you know. Yeah. And it's like it's, it needs these great yeah. artists like Kings of Leon have come back again, which is fantastic because. Oh. You know, oh yeah. Yeah, it's okay, like wow, I love they're back. Kings of Leon, I love them, especially the first three records. Mm. Yeah, Kings of Leon to me is the first three records. I I just I couldn't believe it. Mm. Because oh, there was such a raw, honest heaviness there, mm. uh, emotionally also. Mm. These kids get basically they 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 are from a family that are traveling preachers, mm. and the the three brothers and the oh. nephew they are kings of Leon. <laughs> and uh, the point is with them that the first the first three records they are so raw. I have them obviously. Um, they basically dwell on topics like fighting getting fucked around because you have long hair or mm. being a freak mm. or trying to have sex and cannot make it because it won't get hard stuff like mm. oh you're too drunk that mm. shit they mm. fight a lot like mm. so the first three <laughs> records are a lot about fighting mm. but then they kind of picked up the pace mm. and figured like let's make big records and they did i i kind of i think they're okay but the first three records they i i just my bibles i adore them and um, those three are very heavy. Life, you you you, you want to cry when they, mm. when you heard them, because it was so good. You know, I can hear you. Long, can hear you. raw, raw mm. rock and roll, raw volume. Are there any and bands? Had, uh, are there any bands? Hair. You 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 love. I know you love the Kings of Leon. Are there any other bands that you can recommend to people? Like you talked about the Death Grips. You know, are there any other bands? Yeah, I, mean, oh, I, yeah, I, look, I checked them out. I check them out. They're pretty hot. Oh, they're there are insane. many. My favorite is actually my favorite. My my, my favorite is actually Interpol. I start mm. I from the get go. Interpol is basically my main band. Mm. I I recommend all the records by Interpol to anyone. It's it's heavy. Some say it's it's basically Joy Division. No, it's not. It's mm. it's it's different. It I can understand, mm. but it's it's different. They these boys come from New York. Mm. And they had a lot of things. This, they made at least six albums or something. And um, I have basically all of them. And they are the ones I have like, tea, like two uh, portraits of their albums. One is right there and one is there. In the, in, I'll show you one moment. Mm. Can, you, can you see them? I can see, I can see a painting. The other one is that. Yeah, that's oh, wow. the one. Yeah, fantastic. And that's another painting. That's, mm. that's basically the. The painting from uh, a front cover of one of their albums. I just snatched that up quick because people knew I was crazy about them. Mm. And I went to the record store, one of these record stores in Amsterdam called Concerto. Concerto. Mm. And um, I just, just fucking was crying, like, give me, can I please get it? And they figured now he is a diehard fan. So they gave it to me. <laughs> they all knew me. I'm Wood Boy from Earth. But they figured this guy is so but dude, crazy. That's about it. it. But no, but end of the day, you seriously. I'm surprised you had any problem getting it because you're like basically the ACDC of Holland, your band. Yeah. You must, everyone, must, everyone must know you out there. You know, it must be easy to pick stuff up. And, and yeah. As a matter of fact, now tonight they are on Twitter from the morning on. They, uh, the NPO, like this television program, they're mm. going to start. It's a full performance of the urban dance court on ping pop mm. i'm not even watching i'm talking to you now they will do that on maybe on the when it's uh 11 o'clock tonight and i mm. don't even shift i'm like they they started tweeting me mm. uh, you know yeah. i'm saying yeah i have to do other things because i want to talk thank to you, you. And, thank you and stuff thank like you. that you know well, and, uh, you, we're very happy we're very appreciative of that seriously thank you appreciate that oh it's, it's a pleasure and i'm pleased to talk to you because you know, the thing is, I always love uh, people that are understanding things mm, mm. and have the law for it. And therefore, mm. I'm very open minded because I do not talk a lot with what you consider the mainstream media. Mm, mm. I don't know. Mm. It's all about bullshit, man. They, mm. they just wanna, either want to look for dirt. Mm. And even though I make a, a, a book, 
I'm writing my book about my mm. life in Urban Dance Club. And I must tell you, because I'm an honest dude, mm. the band, as much as, uh, you know, no, no matter how, it was a fact that the band was exceptionally good musical. Mm. At the same time, being in the band was tough mm. because uh, you have to understand that when you, to make a band, that, that's very difficult mm. because once in a lifetime you struck gold mm. in the sense that all the musical elements, they, they trigger each other to, a, to the finesse. But absolutely, absolutely. Character, technically, it could be something else totally. Mm. And that's it's basically the story of the urban dance for that uh, the characters are so complex that mm. if we have one agenda that works until mm. that agenda is gone like mm. now we don't have an agenda therefore we don't exist because some of them have children some of them do other things and mm. I'm not really pleased with the fact that the drummer is working for Sony BMT listen mm. if you if you if you fight against anything in the industry, how the hell you can work for them at the bureau and be mm. an A and R guy? Mm. I don't get it, you know. Mm. And it's like almost like any member of the class would work for a big record company. That's that mm. that won't work. Mm. I mean, what well, you stood I, for? I, I get it. I get it. I absolutely get it. I get it. That's you why know? I'm doing. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing because obviously you've got to be true to to yourself. And it, and the industry sadly, you know, it's got its, it's got its own gender. It doesn't it doesn't respect the music or the artist the way it ought to. You know, you know what it is, Mark. You know what it is. Hmm. Ex exactly. But you know what it is, Mark. You you have just like me. You have your identity. That's hmm. the difference. If you don't have no identity, like you do not really know who you are. Hmm. You 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 used to jump on the band. If a person jumps on the bandwagon, hmm. but that's gonna stop. But mm. if you have your identity, you know what your identity is. That means mm. Mm. I have to avoid certain people because they are not my type. Oh, and yeah. I yeah. will go with certain people because they are my type. Mm. That's the identity, right? Mm. And most of them, they don't. They, mm. they just, they go for the fame, or which doesn't exist. Fame mm. is something, is some sort of gas. Like mm. you get out of Sunoco or something like it doesn't exist, really. If anyone, seriously, if people, if people are hearing this and not, not making sense of it, hearing that from you, who's been there, lived it, everyone should take that on because that's how I look at it. It's not just about the fame. It's really about the heart. You've got you to gotta have a real passion for the music. Otherwise, you won't make it. Mm. This shit is so fickle. This stuff is so crazy mm. that <laughs> if you don't have that mentality from the heart... Mm. You're not going to make it mm. because if it's only fame, you will get it. You will mm. want to go to the glamour and you think mm. I'm a rock and roll. I'm, I'm, I'm great. I'm, I'm like this. I need this car. I need this girl. Mm. I need sell mm. million girls. Mm. I need cars. Mm. That's it, it mm. won't work. Yeah. For certain people, it will. Mm. But you will always see that the music they're making is basically washing powder. Mm. You know, I don't want to be washing powder. talking about a lot of interesting stuff but a lot of a lot of things i'm missing here is basically a lot of bits about you i want to really talk about because you're when you see so you've got a style you've got a lyrical style and you keep you change your style a lot as well 
It's like, do you do you, do you think re- is reinvention something that rock stars have to have, or is it? Or is it? Do we have to have a stick to our own style? Do you have to? Do you have to be always capable of reinvention? Yeah, you, you have two forms of good rock and rollers if you want to talk about rock and roll. Hmm. The one like ACDP type of guy, they will do whatever they always everything they always did, and it hmm. works hmm. because that's what they are, hmm. and they are never soft. You have the other rock and roll guy that will make a couple of records and believes it's great, but maybe, no, I have to put it this way. Then somebody asks him to, if he's willing to cooperate with them, then you listen to these people like, God damn it, this is incredible because, Mm. and you're going to work with him. But in the end, it's this, no matter how you call it, no matter how you put it, it's basically the same thing, really, because it might be a different coat on the puppet, but the puppet stays the same. Mm. And that's how I see things. I, I see a pattern, or should I say a palette mm. of many different colors, but it's the same palette. It's, 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 there is to me no difference between what I consider lo-fi hardcoreness, right? You know what I mean? Mm. Like a guy like Jose Gonzalez on guitar, like, saying these raunchy, heavy emotions where even women cry and Mm. I cry because the simple reason I feel the guy. Mm. That is to me hardcore shit. That's like Mm. being hardcore. Then another guy plays the guitar so loud with a heavy, loud band and you're like, God damn, I I feel that too. Mm. And that's Mm. how you should see me. I'm going for loudness, Mm. whether it's uh, whether it's created in a Way like, um, how does the guy called that everybody loves back in the day? This guy who died, like, like the hardcoreness I feel in, for instance, um, fuck, I can't even come up here. I have his records. Uh, he sounds like the Beatles, but he, women listen to it and he cry. I, he's he killed himself. He hanged himself. Is it? Oh, oh, let me put it this way: If yeah, you take okay. Kurt Cobain, mm, mm. to me, there's no difference between him. And anybody that's what considered now singer soul writer type of stuff that is raw. Mm. I mean, I see the same things, mm. you know. And to me, the Beatles are the same as Death Grips, actually. Mm. Wow. I see the same things, wow. only in a different package. Mm. Only it might be in a different form. I get, form, you. I get it. Thing. Yeah, I get it. Mm. So that's the reason why. That's the reason why I never fight about. Yeah, but how come they ask me, how come you like that? How come you understand this type of artist? I said, real simple. He's good. Mm -hmm. If the Mm -hmm. guy is good, it really doesn't matter. He's playing the whole company. You know, let me give you an example that I'm not talking on the back of my head. That there was a, when I was younger, there was a group called uh, McKenny Sister, something. Mm -hmm. What's the name of that, of those two singers? Yeah, the McCargles. They made a song in 76. I was very young. Mm. but And they were talking in Cajun French. Mm. It blew me away. I just mm. started. I, I didn't know what the fuck they were singing. But the mm. singing was so hardcore. The band was so good. Mm-hmm. I'm like... Wow. I see, I see the equivalent of the Beatles there. Mm. Because it's not about what you're singing or how you sing it, or what kind of language. How you perform I, it. I guarantee how you, you perform that it. song is good. Mm. But not only that, if your idea, listen, listen, mm. good songs to me are good ideas. In mm. other words, if you don't have good ideas, you have no good songs. Mm. The only thing you need to do with the idea is create it well. Mm-hmm. So if an idea comes from Cajun music and it mm. hits me, it hits me. Even though I'm not a Cajun mm. type of guy. Mm-hmm. But if you make a good song and you have the polka, it will cross over. If you make a rock and roll uh, song and and the idea is excellent and it's and it's beautiful, mm-hmm. it will cross over. Brilliant. So it's not about certain styles. It's basically how you do it. And if your if your idea is excellent, then you have an excellent mm-hmm. song. That's how I see it. I see songs and they are to me ideas, mm-hmm. a good idea. 
you know, it's a good song. Do you know, I appreciate that. Do you know, I was going to ask you to say, I was going to ask you, we've gone into that question, but I was going to ask you this same similar question. As a lyricist, if you could give one tip to the viewers, what would it be? Oh, you, 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 you gave, us a, you you gave well. us a little bit of a tip there in terms of ideas and songs, but if there's anything you can give in terms of a tip about, you know, how to construct the thing is there for, for, a lit, for a writer and a singer, mm. because before I sing, I write first. Mm. Or before I do a rap, I write first, right? Mm. The thing is this. I believe, that's me only, that sounds talk to me. Mm. In words, they are like demons. They talk to me. And mm. therefore, I will basically, in the first phase, not do what I want, but actually do what the sound is telling me. Mm. Mm. The second phase is I immediately have the title because my opinion and my feel philosophy is if I have the title, I have the song. Mm. Mm. But the title it. comes from the fact that I'm listening extremely well to the music. Mm. Whether I, if, if I have the music in my head and I have this idea sonically, that's a different matter. Mm. But as a lyricist, I'm listening more to my guitar players who are excellent. Mm. And, and, and especially the guitar to me, I listen to what it's played, which mm. means I'm not going to do what I like or no, what I, what I want to do. I'll do what is said to me. Mm. In other words, I listen to the sound. What you're feeling. And therefore, I get the mm. title. If, mm. the, if, the, if, the, if the, listen, if the sound is not telling me no title, then mm. that it's not good. It just mm. means that another guy has to write it. I get you. Because yeah. I'm, really, you can't connect. Really, you can't if I connect hear the sound, I, mm. I have the title. Mm. That's how I work. So, when did you first realize that you were so popular? When did you first realize? You know what I mean? That you know what the world was connecting with you. I don't know. I, I put it in the diff milder terms. When I came to the Urban Dance Squad. I knew this band was no joke. I knew I belonged there. Mm. For what it for what it meant, I knew it. It's very it's like being in love. If mm. you think you were in love all the time and you finally are really in love, you see the difference between now and those times you thought were you were in love. That's mm. the same with a band. That's mm. the same with and so immediately when I came in the urban dance squad, the first show was we just killed everybody <laughs> who was considered establishment we just fucking destroyed them mm. we didn't hey listen i i had a repertoire we had a repertoire with only seven maybe eight songs we mm. wrecked them with these eight songs wow <laughs> that's how fresh we were mm. then you go back in the lab you started making more songs because you know as a musician you need more songs mm. then we come back we destroy you with that you learn because the more you do it the more you realize that you have to you know chisel certain things out and on. And that means uh, you you become your own expert by mm. doing, this is the thing that very important. Having the law for something means you will get the expertise for it. Let me explain. Mm. By loving what you're doing, or you want to love music, you're loving music. Mm. You're going to do it anyway in that sense, on that path of doing it, you create your own knowledge and therefore mm. you're going to be your, your own scientist of the thing you already do. But that mm. happens before because you love it so much. And loss brings you, love is like a, a tutor, like a teacher mm. and like a philosopher for yourself. That's mm. love. Because wow. I guarantee you, if you have love for something, you're going to be a teacher, a, a lover, a philosopher on your own. That's the difference. You know, and if you don't, that's why I said, if you don't love something like music, you never make it. Mm. It's not enough. You cannot think, you know, I think I love music and therefore I want to have a career. I want to be rich before I'm 30 years old. It's not, it, it might work, but it is not the real, the same thing as somebody who's in his attic or in the cellar writing songs, just jerking around with a couple of friends. And then suddenly they get the neck of it. They starting to realize, hey, that's a nice idea. Let's work it out. And so and so on. That's that's something completely mm. different. That's to me real music. Because I know for a fact the world for you will go up 
and down, up and down. So the question is, what you going to do when you're down? Because when you're up, it's easy. But when you're down, what you going to do? I can tell you what you're going to do if you really love music. You're going to go right. back to how right. you start the shit. Mm. That's it. That's love. That's right. If you don't have love, you have a problem with fucking being on the downward spiral. You, you know, the curve will be down. You, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Mm. You must have the law for it. Because wow. then it's easy to get that, get that down spiral back on top. And you will go like this, right? You will go like this. It will never be like this. Never. It, it ends somewhere. Mm. Then what you going to do when you tip, tip, you just fall down over the ledge, you're going to fucking do what you always did because you have the love. So you don't need to be not even be famous to make the mm. music. It's just the law for it that makes you a, a master of it. You have to have the law for it for what you do. Otherwise, wow. forget it. Good boy. Rubo Remington, thank you so much. That's a lesson and a half. And I think that's something very special that everyone watching this is going to get from a legend of rock and roll, of rap as well. Because you're not just... I hear you. you're I, rap, you're listen, listen, let me put it, uh, end with this. Let me end... Let, yeah. But let me end this with this. Mm. Thank Ter you. Say hi to... Ter listen, say hi to Terrence friend Darby if you ever talk to him. The reason is that he went to on a different path and realized that these people are fucking him up, but he's still living. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. He went hey. back. He went back to what he is mm. because that's his luck. He lost music so much that that's his salvation. Wow. If he didn't love music, he was done for. You know what? And I, I hear what he's saying there. Do you know that the opposite of that is Kurt Cobain, who basically had everything. He was this great, you know, had everything, and he basically took his life. You know, he could have gone back to the music, but he let he let his demons beat him. Yeah, because but the the, the sad thing, the, the the fucked up sad thing for him was he was not really stable about it, and he can't help that. That's that's he he was that type of human. Mm. So if you if you if you can't really have find the tools and the weapons to fight against that, that sadness, you're going to die right there. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of time. And that's the sad thing. He was a genius. He was a stone cold genius, but he didn't have the weaponry to fight against the things that really hurt him. Mm -hmm. And we can discuss this the whole day. We, uh, you can get the books. I have at least three books about him mm -hmm. and, what, I, what it all boils down to, to me, is some of us who are souls, who are honest souls, you know, some of us have, they are ready to war, you know, to do this war, this battle against all these emotions and all these bullshit you get from the outside. And mm. others don't have the tools. Mm. And he's a genius. He's mm. a genius in what he does, but he doesn't have the tools to fight the evilness of that mm. whole industry. Mm. He couldn't cope with it. Mm. And that's not his fault. No, that's no, the way no. The absolutely. Was... Absolutely. He wasn't, he wasn't you know, protected by the it, industry. Just, it's like Amy Winehouse. It's the same story of Amy Winehouse. The industry, when they get their hands into you, yeah. they want what they want. Yeah. And, they, you know, and obviously for them, it's just more, it's more drama. It's more stage. It's more performance. When, when you're struggling as an artist through these emotions, it's just more drama for them. It's more sales. So, man, you know, yes. congratulations for getting as far as you have. And at the end of the day, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with myself and everybody else. It's an absolute pleasure. Seriously. Well, I'll be honest Washington. with you. I'm, I'm, I, wouldn't, it go, I wouldn't call myself a wise man, but, you know, I have my, uh, my moments. <laughs> mm. And the thing is, the moment, the moment that I feel it's a moment, I have to share it to you mm. because otherwise I would be, a clown, and I, I, I'm not that special. You understand? I'm just. You are special. My I brother. have my moments, mm. and when they are there, uh, you too, man. I mean, the, the the whole secret of it all is that when we talk to we, with each other, that's what it's all about. Mm. You understand? We love the same thing, and we be honest about it. That's what it's all about. It, mm. It's nothing else. I mean, I can talk for miles and 
if I would be an actor, I would tell you I'm the best man in town. But I, <laughs> I'm not like that. I'm yeah. just, I, it's better for me to tell you the truth plus to mm. show you that I'm a human being because it makes it more cooler to be a human being with mm. a couple of cool guitar sounds and and, and, and the music sounds, right? Mm. How, how would you feel if somebody, Mr. X, will come to you and say, hey, do you understand who I am? I'm the best man. And you know my my records. You you know I'm good. Mm. It, it, it's, it's not a good. human yeah. form mm. of uh, in, in changing. You know, what's mm. the use of talking to each other? It's much better when you and I talk. It doesn't matter if you are a mogul and I am this artist. Mm -hmm. Just as long as we are open to what's the real deal. And, and that is knowledge by itself. That we, I can get that knowledge. You can get that knowledge. And that, that basically uh, binds the world. Mm -hmm. What doesn't bind the world is that I'm telling a bullshit story that I'm the best guy in town. That doesn't connect the world. No. Honesty. Honesty. And that's what we're trying to do. Honesty is everything. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lack and of, there's in a lack of ways, honesty. You know? The lack of honesty right now. Because people, because people think they're the hot shit. And I'm mm. telling you, it's not. People, if, if people come to the street or on television, like, yo, yo, I'm this, I got this money. I'm like, it won't bring nobody any good. That's mm. easy. Mm. I have an opinion about that. Yeah. Uh, no, Even no, no, though I was a filthy rich right now. I should never, especially when you're filthy rich, you shouldn't portray yourself like the best man on the planet because, first of all, it's not really beautiful. Second, it doesn't uh, inspire. It's not inspiring. And second mm -hmm. or third, it will basically put people on the side, you know, like you want to connect with people no matter what you do, whether, whether you're on stage singing or whatever. It's about connection, whether, mm -hmm. whether you understand it at the point or not. It's connection. And you cannot connect when you think you're the best man in town. Wow. Thank you. I understand. If you're Michael Jordan, I understand. But mm. still, Michael Jan Jordan has fans that he obviously know about that he has fans. You understand what I'm saying? It, it, he can never play all the time that he's the best man because somehow he has to connect with the public. Absolutely. It's all about connection. It's not about telling you that I'm the best man. If you feel connected with me, I feel connected with you and vice versa. That's why the bands like the Specials and the Clash had such a huge following. People would die for them because they were connecting with the people. Yeah. It's same with Bob Marley. Mm. Why the fuck you think Bob Marley is so big? He's connecting with the people. Mm. He's not connecting with himself. He's connecting with the people. Oh, mm. beautiful. Why do people love the Beatles? Same thing. They were from Liverpool. They were regular folk, mm. but they were connecting with the people. That's fine. It's about oh, seriously. That. I love it's, it. It's, love it's it. Nothing else but that. Thank you, man. Absolute pleasure. All right. Let's say good night, no my problem. brother. God no. bless and keep you. Yeah, Thank you so man. much to, for Itore for setting this up. God bless you Have guys. Have a good time, right? I talk to Thank you, you man. soon. I, don't, I just don't want to take. I don't Bye. want to take up any more of your time. I want Bye. you to come and have a good night. God bless you, my brother. Thank you so much. No Most thanks. Appreciate no it. Bye-bye, Bubba. Bye-bye.